Hey guys, how are you? Hey, good. 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 How are you? <laughs> Thanks so much for taking the time today, guys. Pleasure. All right. <laughs> so um, I saw the film, loved it. Great spin on the zombie genre. Um, I just want to know, how did the idea for the short film originally come about? Uh, it was just a brainstorm for another uh, film festival um, where I think Yolanda and I were still on a high from having watched Walking Dead recently and we wanted to think about new ways to explore a kind of zombie film uh, and then just the image of a zombie with a baby on its back was just really provocative to us. And then we consequently never actually made anything for that festival at that time. But the idea stuck with Yolanda and she went away and uh, a few months later popped up with this fully like actual film script, which was just amazing, so we had to jump on and make it. That's awesome. Uh, so why was Australia picked as the location? Uh, I think just because we are Australian, really. It was, it was, we just thought, <laughs> like, we just thought, how can we add something a little bit fresh to the genre? And that's not to say that there haven't been Aussie zombie films before us, because there has. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it just sort of felt, it was a, it was a, a a landscape that I guess we kind of understood and um, and we just saw a lot of scope because of how isolated that country is um, mm. for a character who's on this desperate quest to find somebody to take care of his child. The idea of putting him somewhere, you know, in a in a in a place like that just felt like it would really up the stakes and make that that mission a lot more difficult for him. So yeah, it just ticks a lot of boxes for us. Yeah. And also, you don't get Aboriginals in many other places. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. <laughs> Well, it worked beautifully, and I'd say that Australia is almost like a, its own character. Um, now, I'm curious, uh, what was it like working with um, Martin Freeman? He was fantastic. He was a really, really, really good sport. Um, he had a super physical uh, role in the film, obviously, you know, carrying a, a, a baby on his back for, you know, most of the shoot days. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he was he was incredible. Um the way that he worked with the children was particularly, um, you know, fantastic. And I think a lot of a lot of that rapport that they have on screen is is because of this sort of um, dynamic that they developed in real life. And uh, and I, just as a performer, we're just you know he's so subtle and tasteful and inventive. And we just yeah he 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 was wonderful. That's great. Uh, were any other actors considered for the role? He was top of the list from. Very yeah, early yeah. on, wasn't he? Hmm. Yeah. And I think we just also really were interested in, in the idea of casting an English actor in that part. Um, just hmm. thematically, it was just quite interesting um, to us, given the the history, the colonial history of Australia. It just felt like something, um, a little, an extra layer that we could play with in the film. Okay. That's great. That's great. Um, what was it like assembling the rest of the cast? Um, well, we worked with um, a brilliant casting director um, that I had worked with on Babadook and um, I, I, and uh, Nikki Barrett, and so it was just kind of just coming up with ideas, suggestions, feeling who was right for the different roles, and um, and yeah, and I think the big one was really to me, kind of trying to cast a big net and and finding that actress that that young actress that um you know obviously would have been an experience and that was a big challenge but um she's just very experienced in that regard and we came up with a short list of four and spent a weekend workshop um trying just narrowing down to her and she stood out but um it was all the actors that are in this film are people that we really you know admire their work including David Goldpillo who's like an iconic Aboriginal actor and mm-hmm. Part of this that we're very proud of, and yeah, great. Um, were there any challenges on set? None. Total <laughs> 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 breeze, <laughs> four babies, no problem. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I mean there was uh, a lot of challenges. I guess we had inexperienced actors who had babies. Uh, we had extreme weather, so we were shooting in like remote Australia, um, and they have in remote South Australia. They happen to have and wettest winter uh, in 70 years, so it was uh, a lot of, we had were flooded out of certain locations. Um, mm-hmm. We were, we had a hurricane come through at one point, which caused a statewide blackout, but we wow. still continued filming and set a person on fire intentionally. Which <laughs> uh, <laughs> didn't make the final cut. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. <laughs> 
it's just on our private reels at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, oh. And yeah, and then filming on on the water with uh, boats and stuff as well. Uh, I don't yeah for our first feature we didn't make it very easy on our first. Okay, well it worked beautifully. Uh, and Yolanda and Ben, I want to ask: um, Are there any filmmakers out there that have inspired your craft? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. lots. Uh, oh, what would you say? I mean, I always get stumped on this question. I, I think. <laughs> Alfonso Cuarón is definitely yeah. out there. In a yeah. Nice. I mean, not that our, you know, not that we're anywhere near as accomplished, um, but those, yeah, the, the, the approach that those guys have. I mean, I think we we have very, very taste in terms of genres that we like as well. So it's not just in the sci-fi kind of world. So, you know, people like Jeff Nichols, mm-hmm. um, who are just mm-hmm. making these really sort of subtle, um, interesting, personal, um, you know, sort of genre films. Um, sort of a huge fan of. Yeah. Um, Neil Blomkamp's District 9. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I forgot the director's name. Uh, Duncan yeah. Jones. Duncan yeah. Jones on Moon? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah
sense of things and everything became more of a game. It's like, so you could go from her being in like the right kind of emotional space conveniently at the start and then at the end it's just laughing through it. <laughs> That's awesome. So this question is for all three of you. Uh, what do you guys hope audiences take away from the film? Um, look, I think I think that um, that as a genre film, I feel like people will be surprised how um, hopefully that they'll be deeply moved by it unexpectedly, and I think they take away um, you know that they're entertained, um, but deeply moved. I think is is for for me anyway. I think it's the most. This is what I got from the script reading it that made me fall in love with it, and kind of recognizing the deeper themes of the stories and. Um, you know, around the Aboriginal communities and, and just environmental issues and just social themes that are just, um, I think, very um, subtly dealt with, but hopefully have undertones that people will understand. So that mm -hmm. it's a conversation starter that people will, you know, keep thinking about the film going away, mm -hmm. having seen it. So, but I think most of all that they're moved by it. Yeah. Mm, nice. Uh, ben? Oh, uh, Christina really kind of said everything quite succinctly. Um, okay. <laughs> I don't. I don't think I could really add much more to that. To be honest. I think the, okay. only, I, the only thing I would just add is the emotion. The emotionally moving is absolutely key priority. And then just the other thing would just be it'd be great if people walked away feeling like that they'd seen just something that had just an element of like freshness within this genre. So mm -hmm. something that they haven't been given before within this genre. And if we could tick those two boxes, then yeah. we are delighted. Mm. Yeah, that's the scene of something original. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, it's a it's a huge uh, human drama, that's for sure. I'm curious, uh, are there what actors or filmmakers do you hope to work with in the future? Ooh, oh, I thought about that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, it depends on the script. It does. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, there's, oh, there's so many good people <laughs> out there. Yeah. Well, what's next? Uh, what script are you are you looking to uh, produce next? Uh, but you mean Ben and Yolanda, or? Yeah. Well, what are what are you guys working on now? Um, and what do you hope? You know, what actors do you do you envision uh, being in that in those films? Ah, uh, probably uh, early days in terms of talking about casting ideas. I mean, I mm -hmm. think something just in a general sense that we're really interested in is um, is episodic storytelling. So looking as well mm -hmm. at television and the scope that that has for, you know, um, th there are obviously challenges to, to telling a story in 100 minutes and the idea of actually having, you know, eight hours, ten hours to tell, mm -hmm you know, the first instalment of a larger story and to be able to drill deeper into characters and themes is like a really exciting prospect to us. Mm -hmm. So as much as we love film and we'd love to keep making films, um, we're also really interested in, in dipping our toe in that format in television. And Yeah, so we're just sort of okay. talking about a couple of little ideas for that. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, right. <laughs> I'll, I'll throw one name out, Julianne Moore. And I can't, oh. I can't <laughs> play anything else. We don't have a story in mind or anything like that. Agreed. But it's just, Nice. Write something for her. Yeah. I think sure. she's going to be at Tribeca. Maybe we should like pitch it. <laughs> do it. <laughs> do it, guys. Um, so I'm curious. Uh, last question. Um, what advice do you have for young aspiring filmmakers out there? Uh, I guess first and foremost is just kind of uh, make. It's, it's, it's a bit of a trope that's thrown out a lot, but you just got to make stuff, I guess, because it's kind of like. If, mm -hmm. Uh, and don't get hung up on whether or not the first thing you make is good. Uh, basically, keep making stuff until you've got one that's good. But it's uh, having a proof of concept is probably the most concrete thing you can have to actually show, demonstrate an ability to kind of like step up to the next level. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yolanda? Um, I would say, I mean, I think it would be really helpful just from a, like a, a writing perspective to... Um, never feel like it's too soon to start having a go at writing feature scripts and, and developing that. Um, I think that's a really handy thing. I, there's a lot of different ways to come at it. Um, I think if, you know, we sort of went from the perspective of having a short film first and then a, writing a feature, whereas obviously the other way you can do it is to have a feature script and create a proof of concept uh, installment of that. Um, and I think if you kind of went that way about it, it might, the, the cogs might turn a little bit faster in terms of development of that project. 
um, but also just to explore your explore your craft as a writer, and um, you know you can never have enough of that. All right. Well, Yolanda, Ben, C Christina, this has been amazing. I want to thank you so much again for your time. Um, the film is amazing, and I really think audiences are going to really you know gravitate towards it. And I think it's just a, a fresh look on the zombie genre. It's a human drama, but with zombies. Um, but yeah, I, I I really loved it, and I want to thank thank you so much for being here today. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. And if you guys if if you guys are ever in Long Island, New York, uh, feel free to stop by the studio. I'd love to have you on the show. Oh, cool. cool. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. All right. So enjoy the rest of Tribeca, and uh, yeah, we'll talk soon. All right. Thanks, Randy. Thank Thanks, guys.